Hey everybody, this is uh, Pete Zirk of Iron Savior speaking, and you're listening to Sonic Perspectives. <laughs> This is Michael, the Metal Angel, otherwise known as Metal Milieu, contributing writer for Sonic Perspectives, and I'm speaking to the one and only Pete Zeal from Iron Savior, also Halloween, also Gamma Ray, also several other bands. Um, this is, I think, our fourth time uh, doing, we, I think we've done Skype every time, uh, always talking about how awesome your albums are and how awesome your <laughs> music has been for all the years, you know, writing with Kai Hansen and all the good stuff you've done over the years. Cause yeah, you were in Gamma Ray for a little while or vice, vice versa. Okay. Yeah. Great. Uh, thanks. So uh, thanks. Everything is said by now. Bye bye. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm mucking it up big time. Cause I'm like trying to think of like iron fist and all the bands you were in before even Halloween and Gamma Ray and all that. Anyway. Yeah. Moving on. So we're here to talk about <laughs> the brand new album. <laughs> By Iron Savior, which is called Kill, Kill or Get Killed, right? Yeah, yeah. right. Kill right. or Get Killed it is. <laughs> and it comes out, I believe, tomorrow in the U.S., uh, March 22nd. Yeah, I guess so. It's been out here in Europe as well uh, already, uh, also in Japan. And uh, so U.S. is the last uh, um, territory to where it hasn't been released yet. Right, right. And... Uh, is is there supposed to be like a bonus track? I know there's a bonus track for Japan, but is there like a bonus track for the U.S. of an ACDC cover? Well, actually, there's no bonus because there's no limited edition um, or something. Or it, it's just the al the album. Uh, we didn't do a limited edition this time. Right, right. So it's just the album, and the album contains uh, a cover version of uh, Sin City by ACDC. That's true. Okay. Yeah, the the digital download version that AFM offered didn't have that track, so. Oh, my dog just jumped on my lap. So um, needless to say, I wasn't sure if that was a bonus track or if it was a, like a limited edition U.S. Uh, Japanese. I didn't know what it was, but hopefully it'll be on the CD that <laughs> get in the U.S. So, <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, the Japanese people, they got a, they got a yeah, nice cover of um, Run to You by Brian Adams. So. But I thought that's good for Japan and, yeah. Wait a minute. <laughs> Must you did a... not necessarily be in Europe or U.S. <laughs> You did a Brian Adams cover for the Japanese yeah, did, version? Yeah, did that. I listened to it a couple of months ago. Or it was played on the radio, and I said, well, well, I mean, I'm not a big uh, Brian Adams fan, but I think he's kind of a cool guy, and he has his moments. And I thought, well, Ranji, you is probably something I could sing, and maybe it's a good <laughs> idea to do that for Japan. And so it happened. <laughs> That's awesome. I don't, think any, I don't think I've ever heard any metal band cover Brian Adams. And Brian Adams yeah, is awesome Canadian rock, so yeah, I'm that I'm looking forward. I'll have to go on YouTube to hear that, I'm sure. But that's yeah, it was probably out on YouTube pretty soon, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, run to you. I, the song just is playing in my head. He does Brian Adams run to you on the Japanese <laughs> version. You always do great covers, period. I mean, whether you know whether you're doing pop songs or whether you're doing metal songs or whether you're just doing classic metal songs like Iron Maiden or Judas Priest. You know, you always do great covers. Of course, my favorite cover you ever did. Was Phantoms of Death by Halloween, which I know you had a, you played a part in, you know, writing in the first place. <laughs> so it's not exactly a cover; it's just a recording a song I wrote. <laughs> right, right. That you and Kai kind of sat down and listened to some Van Halen, Judas Priest, and decided to write one of the best power thrash songs of all time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's pretty much it. The riff you talk about of uh, Phantoms of Death. Yeah, that's absolutely. <laughs> Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, Still my favorite Halloween song to this uh, day. I've told that to Kai, too. It's just like Phantoms of Death. I mean, the lyrics are great, but the, the riff is just like... The well, it's pretty much happens. like, don't you better call me a doctor and, uh, um, and you don't have to be old to be wise. Yeah, wise, yeah you don't have to be old to be wise, right. Yeah, that's just amazing <laughs> to take that Judas Priest song and that Van Halen song and create, you know, there are phantoms here are to take away our lives, you know, it's just phantoms of death. Oh, man, that's that's incredible. But, you know, you've written, you've done some great Judas, I mean, I know you're a huge Judas Priest fan anyway, so you've done some great Judas Priest covers and just pretty much I'm sure all your heroes of metal in general, but um, I always like it when you branch out and do something completely different, like on the Code Red album, when you did the uh, the more pop oriented kind of song and, you know, and that, now you're saying Brian Adams, I'm like, oh man, now I want to hear that song. 
<laughs> so anyway, so last week, um, I, I think I had a really rough day or something like, I don't know what it was, but I saw an email that said you guys had just done a video for stand up and fight. And I was like, Oh, cool. Another iron savior video. This should be great. Cause you know, you know, I don't really get into lyric videos because if I just get that <laughs> music and stuff. But when I saw how simple yet how profound that video was of you, and I guess it's your guitarist, right? Yeah, yeah. It's and he's he's sitting guitar, in the guitar, car, guitar. <laughs> driving, and yeah. it's just. <laughs> Unfortunately, the rest of us wasn't was was not available for for on this day, on this day. It had to be done on this very day. And um, of course, they uh, otherwise they would have been in the car as well. But uh, I think the two of us are doing a pretty good job as well. I really love this one. <laughs> it's it's so much more us, you know, than than this uh, uh, the, the the last one. I think the kill or get killed video is is also kind of cool. I really like this uh, the reading part. It's my favorite one on the of this one. Uh, but uh, the, the the one for the last album, for Way of the Blade, that was something we never felt comfortable with. And uh, you know, videos like this, Stand Up and Fight, or or all the old Burning Heart video, this is this is much more uh, what Iron Savior is all about. And so, yeah, <laughs> great video and uh, zero costs. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute! Did you get all? Did you get all on the first take? I mean, or, I know you're lip syncing. It's a, yeah, it's a one. That was the basic idea. It's a one take. There's no cut in there. It's the, this is one scene that runs through. That's so awesome. And just <laughs> all like, I did is adding. All I did is adding later on on the iMovie. I just edited the the, the 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 audio, you know, the, from the recording. That's all. <laughs> so you just sat in the car and lip synced the, all, all the lyrics to "Stand Up and Fight" and imitated with the fist in the air with the chorus "Stand Up and Fight." And yeah. Of course, and, <laughs> like I was laughing my tail, and then I guess Yokim basically brought his air air uh, I don't know, inflatable air guitar. <laughs> cool idea. Huh? Yeah, to uh... do the to do the solos. How brilliant! <laughs> and you said no cost. I mean, some people could probably say, "Oh, that's so simple," or "That's so basic." I I just saw Anvil the other day, and. Lips was saying people think the video for Bitch in the Box is just so so lame because it's just them on the road getting lost and they didn't spend any money on the video. But it's like, but it's a true story. And, you know, his wife came up with the title for the uh, for the song anyway. But I, I mean, just to see you guys just sitting in a car and just stand up and fight, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was exactly the plan, you know. <laughs> did, did, was the car was the car parked and they just had a camera on you or were you just literally driving around? No, no, we were actually no, no. It was uh, it was my iPhone. I, I just well, we were, which was running. Turn on the song on the, on, the, on the stereo, and we were actually we were driving around. We were we were driving through Hamburg, you know. Right. And uh, and well, we do our little performance, and then the video ends. <laughs> But, but 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 keep it simple. I mean, it, it's simple, but but it's it's so it's still funny. It's just there's something about it that there's just a, a subtle sense of humor to it. Not just the the blown up air guitar solo, which just had me in tears, but just the whole simplicity of it. I think is just it's like this is a really clever idea. <laughs> Why have a band thought you know? Because anymore, it's like even some of these lyric videos you see of these bands, it's like they must have spent like thousands of dollars. Uh, for the animation and all the special effects and all the graphic effects. And it's just like, you know, and then they, yeah. have, then they have spelling errors, which they don't even catch. And it's like, that's not how you spell that word. And they're American bands. So it's a shame that they, you know, I understand the European bands might have a spelling error, but when American band can't spell certain words, it's pretty bad. Um, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I won't, I won't mention what name, but I did see a band recently and I'm like, uh, there's only one Z in wizard, not two, but anyway. Um, all right. So moving on. So this album, I've, it seems like for a while Iron Saviors always had very conceptually based albums and very like thematic albums. It seems like this album is just a all individual songs. Is that the case? Well, pretty much, yeah. I mean, uh, it's like a little bit more, a little bit like on Titancraft and also on uh, on uh, on other outputs. I think only the very first four albums are really complete um, concept albums, where where basically every song is uh, connected to the to the story of the album. Um, yeah, and uh, Kill or Get Killed it has like, if I'm not mistaken, three, f no, four songs where are dealing with this. Uh, well, this this idea of uh, Kill or Get Killed, 
And the rest of the material is, uh, or the lyric is, is just, uh, well, maybe sci-fi influence, but uh, has nothing to do with the, with, the, with the main story. And there are also a lot of stuff on there, like uh, from Dust and Rubble, or let's say, uh, <coughs> Uh, for example, Dust and Rubble has nothing to do with science fiction at all. So it's uh, basically a combination of um, yeah of uh, things that matter to me, things that move me, and of course, science fiction is one of my interests and moves me. So there is science fiction on there, but uh, yeah, life is not only only a sci-fi series. <laughs> right. Well, and as usual, almost with every Iron Savior album, uh, as well as with so many other great power metal bands, very uplifting lyrics. Uh, I mean, I, I think of a song like Never Stop Believing um, or Heroes Ascending or even Stand Up and Fight. You know, it's just, you know, just really just powerful, you know, thought provoking, seize the day type lyrics. You're right. That was on Titan Craft as well. It's, I mean, it seems like it, it seems like you write with like a, a joyful aspect or a, 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 what's the word I want to look for? Like the glass is always half full. Um, yeah, that's right. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Very, very well said. Uh, I'm, I'm quite. Well, I'm not a total optimist, you know, but uh, you know, I always prefer to look on the light side of life than uh, than, than on the dark side, you know. And um, that's 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 how. Well, that, that always influences the way I write lyrics. And um, of course, there's. If you look into my lyrics, I also know about the dark side. Uh, I've experienced the dark side quite a lot, and um, but uh, still, um, I really like to look forward and, and see the good in life rather than the bad. <clears throat> That's awesome. So you've risen above the circumstances. You've stared like the death in its face and you know, been the champion that that's, that's very noble and very admirable to be able to, to have done that. And yeah, I think even in, like you say, first four albums, like, especially with the unification stuff, I think the, uh, well, even the dark assault, uh, I think there's a sense of that, you know, you're kind of showing a little bit of, you know, the dark side, but kind of hiding it through science fiction and storytelling and everything like that, which is good. Because that's yeah, yeah. Know, all the good science well, fiction yeah, stuff I mean, works. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, that's right. I, I, most of the time I, I use pictures to 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 describe what I feel or or what moves me, and it's not most of the time I don't put it like straightforward out. You know, sometimes I do that, but most of the time I don't. And um, so it's always a good idea to look at my lyrics. And maybe if you know me as a person, then some things may. Um, this may some bells may ring here and there for you, and if not, it, it doesn't matter. It, because the, in the end, it's the music and the whole thing together what counts, you know. And you know, and you're just such a great songwriter. And I guess now you've pretty much had, with the exception of your of, with your new drummer, you pretty much had a solid lineup for almost what 20 years now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Iron Savior has been really stable in terms of lineup. Um, of course, this change with Thomas um, it was something that that was uh, that was kind of due uh, because uh, um, Thomas started to have less and less time for Iron Savior or, or even some years ago, and because he started playing for um, for a musical production here in Hamburg because um, he really lives 100 percent on his um, on his music. And therefore, of course, making money, especially if you have a family, is a quite an important thing. And so he felt that he that he that the the, the time and the energy, this his um, well, let's let's say professional jobs were were demanding from him, uh, weren't leaving enough room for Iron Savior anymore. And so this was a development that that didn't came all of a sudden. Um, all of us saw it kind of like coming. And um, in the end, it was it's what it was for the good of Iron Savior, also for Thomas himself, and I think with uh, Patrick uh, as uh, his uh, as a replacement for Thomas um, is very very well choice because he's um, yeah he really nails when it comes to power metal. He might not be as uh, versatile as Thomas, um, but if it comes to do power metal drumming, it's 100% his thing and. Power metal drumming is what we need in Iron Savior. <laughs> Absolutely, and it's hard. It's hard to believe that the band's been around for almost almost 25 years. Um, I remember seeing your name pop up when you were always producing great stuff, like like Gravedigger, uh, 
you know, the Reaper and all the stuff. Like, I always saw your name pop up, and I always remember people, you know, saying, like, oh, this guy used to work with Kai Hansen, and this guy used to have, you know, history with Halloween and all this stuff. But I remember when the first Iron Savior came out, it was kind of weird because it was, like, on Somewhere Out in Space, Gamma Ray had the same song <laughs> that was on the Iron Savior album. And yeah. and I remember, like, getting that. It's just hard to believe that was 1996 when that first one came out. And then when Unification came out, that was just... That was just one of the best power metal albums ever. I just still to this day love that album and still get confused about why there's like another band song on there. I guess they won some kind of competition, so they made it on the CD or something. That was always a confusing situation. But that's cool that you've been keeping this going for so long. And I mean, now it's like there's so many bands with Iron. I'm trying to do an interview with uh, Martin Steen from Iron Fire. And of course, you know, there's just every time I turn around, there's another band with the name Iron in it. But you actually were Iron when there weren't a whole lot of bands other than Iron Maiden, you know. Yeah, right. Exactly. Actually, that's why. I, that's why at this point thought it's okay to have Iron in the name because there is only Iron Maiden out there. There was exactly. the only other band, except I knew of, of course, I must say. But uh, that was the only other band I knew who carried the term Iron. In Maybe their Iron name, Angel so, would have been the yeah. other band, but yeah. And um, so I th so I thought, okay, Iron Savior sounds awesome, and I will do it. <laughs> and you're, you're you the the whole sci-fi aspect, you, you, the, the ships and the covers, they were made of iron and steel, and the whole idea is that they were trying to save humanity and bring back the remnant and all that kind of stuff. So it fit the whole theme, so it made sense. But I see these band names now with the iron, and it's just like, come on, you know, lose the iron, lose the steel, lose the dragon. Lose the fire. <laughs> Come up yeah, with something clever. <laughs> yeah, not to be too 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 picky, but what 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 is an iron fire? What is that? <laughs> I don't know. I guess the, when 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 you when you uh, make swords or something, it takes both iron and fire on the anvil. <laughs> so maybe I don't know. What is uh, what what is an iron? What is one I saw the other day? I, well, oh, you know what? There's always Iron Butterfly and then the God of Even. So I guess we have to give them credit. Oh yeah, exactly. Still, there was still iron, don't know what butterfly. iron Butterfly. So that was is. the that was the other iron I knew of. Exactly, yeah, of Iron Butterfly. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> uh, and kudos. I, I will. Uh, I'll go on a tangent. Well, first of all, I, I saw the other day Iron Trees. And it's like, uh, what's an iron tree? There's a great song by Rush called The Trees, but what's an iron tree? So we A very hard about, tree. A I, very, I very hard tree I made of iron. Heavy metal trees, man. Anyway, but, uh, <laughs> but on, on a tangent, I will say... If you're um, very, very, to be a very dedicated metal fan, you have iron trees in your garden, you know? <laughs> Well, you know, maybe a sculpture to get along of an with iron your tree. Iron, along with your iron house sitting on your iron porch. Okay? Yeah, exactly. Your iron chair, That's watching the house. iron sun going down <laughs> on the iron horizon. Exactly. That's a whole lot of hot metal. <laughs> burning steel. Now, yeah, steel, of course, steel. Yeah, steel is the other word that you need, of course. Of course, you also, for for the variety, of course, you, you maybe have a little hut of steel, a steel hot or yeah, you, know, yeah. you know not a whole lot of metal bads called lead or nickel or dime or you know <laughs> <laughs> oh we're total nickel man no. yeah anyway but in another we're, tangent i have to say we're the wood man <laughs> uh still to this day don't know what an iron butterfly is and i know in the garden of eve it was in the garden of evil or in the garden of eden they can't decide because they were so stoned but in, in the god of Eden. but i have to say yeah. uh in the early 90s being an american um the only Uriah Heap stuff I knew was what they played on the radio, and it was like the simple stuff, not the really. And I, when I first heard you guys and Gamma Ray and some of those other bands cover Uriah Heap, you know, I know when Hansi Kirsch and uh, John did the uh, Demons and Wizards, to show my ignorance, I didn't even know there was a Uriah Heap album called Demons and Wizards. And, you know, to listen to those albums now and realize how epic and how. Uh, influential they were and i would hear you like <laughs> covering nazareth <laughs> and covering uh uriah heap and i only knew like you know uh what is it uh the cover of love hearse which isn't even a nazareth song or the you know the 
What's the the bitch song that Nazareth does? You, didn't you guys? Yeah, you guys did. Uh, oh, the, the, the best for me, the best song Nazareth did, did this uh, this flight tonight. Yeah, that's what you covered. I'd never heard that. That's, right, yeah, of right. course, that's what we covered because we only cover the best. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did a great, uh, you, you, but you also did a great. You also did a great uh, your I Heat cover too, and. Um, to show my ignorance, even on the debut by Gamma Ray, they did a Uriah Heap cover, and I still didn't know it was Uriah Heap because, you know, in America, we just had, you know, like, just the simple songs they played by Uriah Heap and the simple songs they played by Nazareth. Yeah, you know, uh, Hair Did a Uriah Heap cover? What, 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 what kind of what, what Uriah Heap cover? Um, weren't they doing a uh, Return to Fantasy cover? I think yeah, I thought you guys the, did that... Return to Fantasy. No, no, that was Gamory, actually. That I was Gamory. Gamory. All right. Sure. Gamory did, did return to Fantasy. All right, well, not, you, guys, not us. you guys did Nazareth this flight tonight, right? Yeah, we did Nazareth and a lot of priests and uh, some other stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, all the all the basic metal bands. Um, didn't you do a Dio cover, too? What? A Dio cover, or was it Rainbow? Um, no, it was uh, no, it was not exactly Dio. It was Black Sabbath with Dio. It was Neon Knights. Neon Knights. Okay. All right. Well, I was close. Did that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Close. <laughs> yeah. I'm, my, my memory is not what it used to be. We actually got to see uh, we got to see um, Last in Line last night and got to meet Vinnie Apice and uh, lots of good pictures of Vivian Campbell and to hear all those early Dio songs was just incredible. But that's right. You did Neon Nights. That's right. I'm trying not to cheat and trying not to go online and look up this stuff. I'm trying to use my memory. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. I'm, I'm trying. Trust me. I really am. It's not, it's not as strong as it used to be. It used to be really like I used to be able to be like Eddie Trunk kind of stuff. And now I can't. Blah. But anyway, um, but no, my, my point being that uh, I only knew Nazareth, Hair of the Dog from Guns N' Roses. I only knew Nazareth, Razamanaz from Artillery. By the way, I have no idea what a Razamanaz is. And I only knew Love Hurts, which they covered. But I didn't know this flight tonight. And the same thing with Uriah Heep when Gamma Ray covered it on their debut, when they did Return to Fantasy. I was not familiar with those songs. Uh, you know, only knew the, the basic stuff. So I want to I want to be thankful to you guys, you wonderful Germans, for reintroducing me <laughs> to so many great. I know, I guess, what Nazareth are Scottish, right? Nazareth is uh, Scottish. Yeah, right. So all the great bands from the UK that I somehow missed out on in my childhood, um, and now there was all the great German power metal bands that helped me discover. All those great, all those great things. That was my that was my point that I completely missed. That so we should go back to the Iron Garden and the Iron Tree and the Iron Savior with an Iron Butterfly Land. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Five more minutes we have. Then, I know, uh, I know. I'm see. checking my I'm checking my clock. Uh, I was gonna wrap it up by saying, are we ever gonna get like a U.S. tour? I know you played Prague Power, but are we ever gonna get like a U.S. tour? Uh, you know, uh, to be honest, tour is, touring U.S. is very, very expensive because, oh, I, I mean, first of all, first of all, you need to fly us all, us all over there, you know, right. and, and of course, this, this, I would never say never, uh, but, uh, uh, but I also have to be realistic. It's not a very likely thing to happen, to be honest. Festival is a different thing because um, if it's a good one, they usually have more more of a budget, you know, right, and right, right. and then they can bring in, uh, and it's also uh, well wanted by the by the by the by the people to to have interesting acts also from uh, on an international basis. So that's kind of normal. Um, but you know, Iron Savior flying to the states and doing a, a, a club tour. Yeah, I mean, where would we start? I mean, it's pr probably we could cover one state, you know. But right. uh, <laughs> I understand. It's, it, or the other problem is also that the states are so so fucking big. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you know, we could we could of course we could fly to New York and then maybe play a couple of shows in the New York area. Right. And then go back, but I wouldn't call that a U.S. tour. I mean, right, it's right, like playing right. in, in terms of uh, bringing it down to Germany. It's playing a little bit around of uh, in and outside of Hamburg, you know, and that's right. it. <laughs> I wouldn't call that a German tour then also. Well, Kai Hansen. And, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, no problem. I was pretty much done. <clears throat> well, Kai Hansen and uh, with Gamma Ray and Halloween about 10 years ago toured together the U.S., and it was successful. And now they got the uh, Pumpkins United, which was extremely successful. And I think they played seven dates in the States. So if you could ever jump on that, 
<laughs> of course, that will be something. But uh, as you know, the Pumpkins United, they don't have support X. They play oh, yeah, three yeah. hours themselves. <laughs> right, I know. I, and understandable because they got so much to play. So, but, well, yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> just a suggestion. <laughs> well, Pete, it's always fun to talk to you. I know I got way off topic. And kind of, it was kind of fun that you <laughs> played along for some of it. But once again, a uh, fantastic new album. Uh, great new songs. Love the videos, especially Stand Up and Fight. That's just brilliant <laughs> to come up with such a simple, basic, but very true to life video. Um, you know, and don't let anybody criticize you for the simplicity because it's actually brilliant. Um, once again, I love the very optimistic lyrics. And I just want to say one thing before we go. We uh, ask you to play one song we uh, for, for us to play for you. What song would you suggest we play from the new album? Well, that's really, I, I knew that question was coming, and um, it's, it's really hard for me. It's really, really, really hard, I must uh, admit, because <clears throat> I'm, I have to do the same decision right now t at the, this moment because I'm putting together a new um, life set, and uh, there's so many songs that I really want to play, and, I, and, and on my list are at least six songs from the new album we need to play. Um, on stage, so it's going to be quite a dramatic um, change of uh, for for a live set, right. uh, putting in six new songs. But that also shows that that this is quite a really important album for us, absolutely, um, especially for me. And so it's it's uh, I really can't say the Brian but Adams cover. Say? <laughs> Brian Adams cover, which is not on the old version. Okay, yeah, that's cool. We do that. No, <laughs> if we can find it. <laughs> uh, of course, I mean, I really like the title track, Kill or Get Killed. I it's an amazing track. It, and um, it, it really shows uh, what uh, the listener, if you're not familiar with Iron Savior, you listen to Kill or Get Killed, you at least get a pretty good idea of what is, could, could happen in the Iron Savior cosmos. Hey Amen. That's a good point. All right, we'll go with Kill or Get Killed. It's the title track. It is an excellent song. It does set off the uh, album and... If, if you haven't heard Iron Savior, then you're going to you're gonna hear an album that blows you away. If you're an Iron Savior fan like most of us, you won't be disappointed in the least. And Pete, I want to thank you again for your time and your energy and your positive. And I remember when I talked to you a couple of years ago, you were saying how you were turning 50. We must be like 55 now, right? No, no, not not yet. I turned 55 in uh, this year in November. But yeah. Okay. Um, um, I'm, <clears throat> yeah, uh, well, I mean, nobody, none of us is getting younger. It's all to me. <laughs> the 54 and a hammer out such a kick ass album. That's amazing. Uh, kudos for you for that. So, <laughs> awesome. Thanks. All right. You take care. Thanks, Michael. All right. Bye. All right, Michael. Have a good one. And, um, well, talk to you, um, probably for the next album, I guess. Absolutely. Huh? Always. All righty. Okay. okay, man. Bye. Have fun. Bye-bye. Cheers. You bet. Auf Wiedersehen. Wiedersehen. Tschüss.